Now he looks. Guys, lucky. please shut the fuck up. Who? Hey, bench Dude. guy. What? what? Why did you just open up a bag of beans, bro? Who is bench that? guy? Bingle. He gained weight. Yeah. That's a good thing. He looks like I said, like skin and bones. Oh my yeah, God. this guy right here. What the yeah, fucking right. bozo? How do you not have papers, you clown? <laughs> it's an illegal immigration, uh, isn't, um, no you know, it's not against the law here. It's not illegal. There immigration isn't illegal here. Forehead. Well, marriage yeah, also isn't illegal. Isn't there like a federal ID thing? Oh, French people. Yeah. Kind of fucked up, Wrangler. Yeah. I just hate the French people that live here. Isn't that oh, guy, like, my girlfriend? Wanted you mean Pilbis? What? Illegal immigration or some shit. Yeah, who's your girlfriend? Me? French. She's from France. Oh, France? Ugh. I oh, I see. Oh, I boy, Sky's uh, gonna kill him. Did you guys know that Julio Thomas yeah, has an active yeah. warrant? I speak a little bit of French. Wait. Oh, 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 oh. Jimmy Pilbis. Oh. I'm gonna go back here so I can't get arrested. Uh, future judge, future judge. Oh, don't, don't, don't disrespect. Kirby, just. Oh, this guy's face looks like a pencil. I don't know. I don't know. Like <laughs> hey, uh, Crane, apparently you locked someone in your office. Whoa, that's pretty small. Oh, I think it's Bucky. Pilbis, can you see that? Goddamn case law. Case law. Goddamn case law. Oh, not that. Not that. Not that one, bro. He, he locked Bucky in there. Case law. Uh, case law. Okay. This is gonna take a minute, so let me get through this, okay? Um. So first off, I want to thank both sides for you know dealing with the accommodations of the lawyer situation, all that. Um, I think this should be a lesson to everyone about, you know, manifest destiny and, uh, you know, ensuring that things are going the way you want them to now. Case law! In terms of, uh, the case. Okay. So, uh, I want to note for a couple things first. Um, the idea of the, uh, quote-unquote damages... The relief being asked for in this case uh, literally only states violation of rights and, and breach of privacy. God damn it, uh, there Kermy. There is no reference to cleaning costs or, uh, you know, Kermy. damage to property replaced with a monetary value. Uh, so any conversation about donuts or, you know, broken shit or oh, trash bags no. and whether they were put there by the police or Mr. Fulker himself or anyone else, uh, is irrelevant because it wasn't even discussed whatsoever in the relief. Uh, on top of that, I just I don't find any of the evidence to be especially compelling either way. Um, God so it, I, I didn't really consider the the property in the hallway and everything in this decision. Uh, I want to go ahead and talk about the foundational law that covers. I paid uh, for the that. In this I case. paid for that. Uh, so uh, while Captain Wrangler did allude to a piece of case law, uh, Missouri v. McNeely. I'm gonna make note um, of when that the power refers to out. a scenario in which uh, a DUI suspect uh, was sought to have their blood retrieved by an officer without a warrant. The officer's articulation was that he should be able to seize uh, the evidence from the person, you know, search and seizure of their person without a warrant because over time the person's blood alcohol level would dissipate and thus, uh, there was an exigency-based sort of time frame. Is this a real? It. Is this a real case um, law? While I understand Captain Wrangler's, uh, you know, use of the case in terms of talking about totality of the circumstances as a general test, uh, I will say that we already have a uh, case law in this jurisdiction when it comes to uh, warrantless entry of private domiciles, and that case law does in fact utilize. Um, a totality of the circumstances test. So I will now refer to that case law uh, for everyone's benefit. Uh, so there is a case law in the uh, in this city called the People v. Otto Delmar. It was decided Tuesday, March 21st, or March 16th, 2021. Oh, it is the Otto one. Uh, the case law is written as follows. 
Pursuant to the Fourth Amendment, there is a general warrant requirement for law enforcement to enter private properties, including privately owned and maintained premises, residences, and domiciles. One exception to this general warrant requirement is the exigent circumstance of preservation of life. This exigent circumstance requires a reasonable objective belief by a police officer that a person inside of the premises is injured or otherwise threatened with serious injury. A single dispatch call indicating that shots have been fired inside or nearby a residence does not by itself support that exigency. Exigent that seems so vague, though. Like, I mean, you could just say, I thought somebody was in there and they were the hurt, must be supported by which is more, literally what Wrangler including, does. Including, but not limited to, hence the aforementioned totality of the circumstances. Uh, one, law enforcement hearing additional shots in the area to be entered. Two, dispatch or 911 calls indicating an injured person in the area. Three, evidence on scene which tends to indicate injury has occurred, such as casings or blood mm, found okay. in public areas for which a warrant is not required. Four, corroboration by individuals on scene that shots were fired in an otherwise private or residential area and that individuals were injured. And or five, ongoing dispatch calls of shots being fired in the area sought to be entered. Uh, so there's a couple terms we have to define for ourselves in analyzing this language. Number one, what is the area? Uh, the area to be entered is the language used, and as said in the first clause of this case, it's referring to a privately owned domicile. So the question then becomes is, uh, you know, for the purposes of this test and this examination, for this uh, one example of exigency that is in our case law, is there uh, a definition of the area which makes the home of Mr. Fulker the same area as the Mirror Park Tavern? Uh, to that, I would say it is in the same neighborhood, uh, but for in terms of the area, I believe the area in this case law is referring to, let's say, if there is a warehouse complex and there are shots fired and blood and dispatch calls of ongoing shots fired, it would be prudent to check, let's say, warehouses in that complex. I'm not certain and I'm not uh, persuaded that the Mirror Park Tavern would be considered the same area as the location in which Mr. Fulker's house is for a couple reasons. Uh, it also, in prong number three here, says evidence on scene. Uh, I'm pretty convinced, based on my reading of uh, incidents and handling of bench trials and formal trials, that police would definitely refer to uh, the Mirror Park Tavern shooting scene as independent from the scene where the car was found. So uh, under that guise, um, I don't believe them to be the same area or scene for the purposes of this case law. Now, uh, do we have these circumstances? We have some casings. Um, we don't have any reports of anyone being injured. I mean, all these questions and comments were, were pointed out uh, by Nielsen, both on the cross of Wrangler as well as in his closing. Uh, was there a dispatch calls of an injured person? Was there any proof that an injury occurred? There were casings, no blood. Uh, was there corroboration by individuals on scene that shots were fired at the area to be searched, which is the house? No. Uh, was there any corroboration of uh, ongoing dispatch calls showing more shots fired or anything? No. So uh, to counterbalance that, that's one example of exigency. We would have to basically um, listen to Wrangler's uh, assertion here that he is asking the court to enable via a decision in this case and what would be precedent case law and understanding that uh, the Give presence me 10K. of a vehicle <laughs> that is tied I'll take 10K. Uh, to uh, the owner of the house or people involved uh, roughly, <laughs> and I say roughly because there's some degrees of separation here and some assumptions that have to be made about you know, where people were and what they did and where they went. Um, and you'd also have to uh, tie that to the idea that the door being unlocked uh, is enough to enter the home when considering all the other things, the casings at the other scene, the connection in sort of ownership of the uh, first scene's business to the, the second area's home, the car being in there. Um, but I'm going to simplify things. So the, the questions I tend to ask myself were, if I went down to the Grove Street cul-de-sac as an officer and Crackhead Craig's car was parked outside a house that he owned, and there were a whole bunch of casings on the ground, but no blood, no ongoing shots fired. 
no proof that he ran to a house, no one reporting that there were shots going from inside a house, uh, but the door was unlocked, would I allow officers to breach that home or would they wait for a warrant? Uh, my perspective is that they would wait for a warrant because oh, thank the agency relies <laughs> on the time frame, and the time frame is typically surrounded by the idea of threat to life. In this case, there is no corroboration, number one, that there was anyone even inside the house, not by ongoing shots fired, by blood trails, by anything. Uh, if, if Flippy was even the one driving his car, uh, you know, let alone any evidence about, you know, tampering check or anything, or any evidence of anyone saying that it fled the shots fired scene in the first place, uh, if he was even driving his car, what's to say he didn't hop the wall over there on the back of that, you know, house and run down a hill and hide in a bush or do any number of things? What's to say that someone who shot at that first scene didn't hop a wall and go to one of the houses behind the Mirror Park Tavern? Uh, overall, there's a number of logical leaps that you have to uh, agree to in order to reach the idea of exigency. And even if I stipulate to the logical leaps made by Captain Wrangler and his assumptions in good faith as an officer, I still don't believe that there's enough to justify the uh, warrantless search because... Uh, there is no idea for me that there is a time frame component. I don't see any evidence, even if I stipulate to his assertions, that he has a good faith belief that someone in that home is in danger. He has uh, assumptions, he has hunches, but uh, the, the evidence is far too tenuous in this case for me to allow the extension of the case law uh, and the precedent it would set when it comes to warrantless entry into homes. So as a result, uh, I am going to find in favor of the plaintiff in general. Now, here's what I will say. <sighs> First, uh, this is a very narrowly decided case. This is not Captain yeah, Wrangler acting in some case. outrageous sense of uh, extreme bad faith. Do I think he's like sure. some rampart cop just kicking <laughs> yeah, in every door? Agree. No. Uh, yeah, do sure. I think that he made a sure. the case tomorrow? Next person who says a word gets contempt. Uh, do I think that there was a judgment call here made that was an improper application of the case law and shows maybe a little too aggressive uh, assumption uh, and, you know, assertions being made? Yes. Um, so let's go to Fingal Dan. Uh, Fingal Dan is not an officer. He, uh, you know, is not in a position to be sued for violating someone's civil rights. Uh, if you wanted to try to get charges pressed against him for trespassing or, you know, breaking and entering, uh, you need to find an officer to do so on top of that. Um, he did so at the behest of Captain Wrangler. So for the purpose of this case, I'm pretty much lumping everything into Wrangler's autonomy and decision-making. <laughs> I don't think a financial decision against Fingal Dan has any deterrent uh, to it, any any value at all. Uh, so I'm not issuing any claims against Fingal Dan. I am finding in favor of the plaintiff against Captain Wrangler. I think he did violate uh, the principles of the Fourth Amendment in entering the home, uh, I don't believe that this equates to such an outrageous breach or there was any damage proven. So on a purely sense of the civil violation of the rights, I will issue a $20,000 verdict against Captain Ooh! Wrangler for the stipulations of the legislation surrounding verdict. Hey, I'll take 20 k 10000 will be paid by Wrangler within, uh, I believe it's two weeks in the uh, legislation. Hey. And the other 10000 will be paid uh, by the PBSO. That is the verdict of this case. I will stick around and talk about it after. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Craig. You're great. Mingle, you got a W. All right, All right good luck, Sam. Go run Mirror Park. All right. 10K coming my way. Wait, don't say a word, Justice. Don't say a word. <laughs> Are you? Yeah, Your Honor. Um, they just abandoned Stanley. Stanley and. Am I free to go yet, man? <laughs> He's been in custody for like five hours. He was in custody for five hours. Wrangler's acting in bad faith. He he was brought here to testify in a court case, which would have otherwise be uh, delayed and continued. Wrangler just walked out without me. That he was brought here. He's and they just acting in bad faith. He was acting in bad faith. I'm not talking about, oh, yeah, but, about well. he, was, he was being held before the case in bad faith. Okay, why are you All right. me this right now? Well, okay. Like, what do you think? I'm going to uh, issue an extrajudicial verdict and do something right now. <laughs> if you think you oh. have a case, sue someone. Do not approach me and ask me to do oh. something. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Say something okay. back. <laughs> Come right. on, speak up, bro. Um, what am I doing with right, Sam later? Go. 
I don't know. I have no knowledge of what you were doing with him in the first place. <laughs> Okay, so you're still waiting on the outstanding submitted document. Uh, okay, I will go review it. All right, what? let me just go fill it out and submit it. Thanks, Crane. It was not submitted? I thought it was. Uh, I'm going to be honest, Crane. This whole situation, I don't know. It, 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 is judge shopping not unethical now? Or are, are we just doing this? Hey, don't you guys do this uh, for what? warrants? What the fuck? Yeah, your warrant gets denied. You just give it to another judge to accept it. Nico. Yeah, I heard him. It's over now. I don't have a gun. But I'll shoot you with my words, pussy. Something that was already oh, filed was it not at the okay. time? Yeah, okay. Sorry, no. sorry. Hades is here to turn back. Yes. Uh, all right. Yeah, I'll need to speak. Yeah, you can file a bar complaint if you'd like. Oh, I would have well, I don't have a. <laughs> yeah, I didn't file a. Skingle? Was that the one who sounded like a Minnesotan or Canadian? Who the fuck is Bro Skingle? Yeah, if that's like your belief of what exactly happened, like uh, then you should file a bar complaint no, and it'll be reviewed. I, swear he like right, he was okay, I did not so file the case. I don't know anything about that. Filed yeah, he's kind of like, through the submission. Yes, <laughs> the person who filed it and did all that doesn't have a bar you, uh, license. Yeah, okay, so the thing oh, yeah, would stand should really make sure that spaghetti's a little more cooked next time. Hey, what's up, buddy? Okay. Come on, Stanley. Let's go get shot outside. Where are we going? We're going to Seems get shot like outside by your goons. What? Oh, oh, we're all in they're here. They're all in here. What? <laughs> the fuck? Right, they're all in here. Got it. No Stanley. bias at all, by the way. Julio <laughs> Thomas does have an active... Oh, of course I'm biased. I'm a police officer. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Are allowed to be biased? <laughs> okay, look at my record. Have I ever Definitely shot a cop? not allowed to break into homes. Well, listen, it wasn't breaking in. It just a little bit. Well, it wasn't. Oh, even just a little. Bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm sorry. Is opening a door breaking anything? You broke my door, motherfucker. Yes, I did. The sanctity one, of our privacy, oh. bro. You broke yeah, you their broke hearts. That. So everybody right here yeah. just heard him say, "Yes, I broke yep. the door." <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. yep, pretty hey, much. Hey, you want additional witnesses? Just let us know. Uh, hey, Beautiful. Holy oh, man. Hey, when do I get my money from the police department? You said yeah, two we weeks, and then the second half. No, that was for that was for Wranglers. Well, yeah, but uh, for you. TV. Oh, for both of them. It's two weeks for both, yeah. Uh, what are these? Uh, do if I, they don't, uh, if don't they know, don't give anything to you in those two weeks, up. then you have to. This is a public environment. Have, like, uh, I, I guess myself, you didn't have permission. I have to come back to court again. Well, you wouldn't have to go to court. You just tell the judge, hey, they didn't pay me. And then like the we're judge normal. would go, hey, hey, Amir, you get disobeying a court order he's and we outrageous. fuck they you. Like talk to a dude. Do they have to pay more then if that happens? Uh, they, wanna, like, make they might sure pay us jail time or something, but it's unlikely they would have to pay more, but they could face crazy. other consequences. Fingal's the real winner. I'm fucking you. Yeah. Oh, Nico, you missed That's true. Fingal's all good. Good to go. All right. Easy. Well. Nice oh, dub. Job, Let's hope that uh, this doesn't so happen again. Room, Although we know it will. It definitely it will. So it says if they don't pay you, either you hit me up or just a little bit of hit me up, and then I'll file on the docket saying that they're violating court order. So two weeks from today, like two weeks from right yep. now, when this verdict was reached. Two weeks from right now, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I just want to map this so out. It, so it's going to be know. it's going to be the eleventh at twelve twenty ish. Eastern. Wouldn't it be the 10th? Well, it, it, yeah, it depends on your time zone, says. Okay, 10th. All right. Yeah, 10th, like 10, 15 minutes ago when the court case is over. I'm going to set my reminder for the 10th. I'm going to yeah. I'm gonna have a very specific alarm. Maybe one of Wrangler Malding set on my phone. So I know that's when his bitch ass needs to pay me. Is it going to be Wrangler <laughs> begging to have the court case delayed? Yeah, I don't know. He might, he might try for the next one. I mean, he will. He already got it delayed once. <laughs> All right. Well, now we're going to be harassed pretty much indefinitely. So. Yeah. Have fun. Well, I mean, Wrangler has, like, no attention span. So 
he, he forgets about things. Like he's going to move on to somebody else he hates in like a day. Oh, look, as long as we continually have this history documented in the court, nobody can say we are not going through this, you know? Yeah. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate well, it. Good luck, sis. Hold it down. Dog. I will actually give me your number real quick so I can. I don't know if I have your number so that way I can uh, call you if I need anything. Actually, you're probably in the app, right? Boom. Either yeah, way. I am in the app. All right. All right. Good luck. I'm going to bed. Good night. Thanks again. <laughs> Damn it, man. Kermy didn't fucking put that we wanted relief for tossing my house. It didn't. Whoa. God dang so it, sorry. dude. God dang it. Are you okay? Yeah, oh. fine. Yeah, I'm Wait, can you give me a ride to the How's everybody cabin? doing? Uh, yeah, my car's to the left. Uh, of me. we were do me, Gilia, Tio, and Puck were doing Sandy for quite a bit. Dante, you have keys to the to truck. Be a legal uh, person. Be a yeah, no, I'm giving it to him. <laughs> Anybody need to pick go. up the courthouse? Or you All right, what'd you think? How'd that go? Uh, I mean, I'm fine with it. Uh, you could have got a little more if you would have posted the relief, but it's all good. Well, I mean, uh, I, it's not about the money. It was about, you know, actually showcasing, uh, you know, get, getting the, the proper documentation of it. You know what I mean? That Wrangler fucked up, yeah. Uh, exactly. Well, I also, the, the idea to trash it didn't come until after, and I, I didn't even think about putting it on the, uh, the docket. So that's, that, I'll, I'll take that one, but... I mean, 20 G's, 10 from him, 10 from the PD is, is not that bad. However, we're going to have to deal with his harassment probably for the short term. Is that not a problem, by the way? Like, uh, I feel like that's a pretty big problem that we could do something about. I don't know. Ask Crane. I'm kind of mad at him right now. Look, I mean, you should probably just go discuss it so he can give you his point of view then. Well, I don't, I don't, is, is Wrangler still at the courthouse? No, they're all gone now. Crane, Crane's right, still there, though. The courthouse. All right, yeah, I'll go talk to him. All right, I'm going to fix my car. I'm still in the area. I can come back. I'll swing back in a minute. Wait, what? Fuck, I completely forgot what I was just saying. Yeah, yeah I'll, okay, no, all right. I'll, I'll swing back. back over there in a minute. Okay. Is this your lawyer in the car? Yeah, hi. Yeah. Where am I taking you? Beer Park Tavern. My bike's there. 